What's up, y'all? Sparty here. So, in this video, I want to talk about the dual screen case and basically what it does for the V60, if it's useful, if everyone should have it, if, who should have it, and all that crap. So, let's get into this here. And um, for me personally, just to get it off the bat, I feel this is for people that want to maximize the amount of stuff you can do on your phone at once. The things you can do, like, you can play two games at once if you want. Say you want to play Lineage 2, like an M a very intent, a very resource intensive MMO and play maybe King of Fighters All Star, which is also pretty intensive. You can do that. And it'll definitely take a hit on performance the longer you, play, you the longer you do it. Like the, when I've noticed it, it maybe would like start to chug a little bit after an hour. <laughs> but that's honestly to be expected. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because you know what can you do? The Snapdragon 865 is a powerful chip, but you can't really expect to run to run two games, two separate games on two different screens and have it be perfect and not hitch at all, right? So yeah, that's something that I indeed do quite a bit. You could do YouTube and watch and play. You could watch YouTube and play a game. You can. Have your gallery up, and I'll just do this. You could have your gallery up on one screen, and say if you're video editing and you want to, <laughs> and you want to pick clips, you can watch clips up here, or find them in or whatever, and then just go into your camera roll and put them in. That's something that's really nice. That's something that's really, you know, useful. And I do that quite a bit and it works just fine. There's no, like I said, no hitches, no lag or anything like that. The optimization to LG has done for this is really smooth. It's really fluid. I don't really, I don't really have any issues in terms of like performance overall with it. Unless, like I said, I'm playing two games at once for elongated periods of time, but that's pretty much it. Things, t things to keep in mind. So when you, when you are typing on the dual screen display, you will indeed get like haptic feedback, but obviously it's going to be coming from the phone, but it doesn't really feel like it's coming from just the phone. It kind of feels like it's coming from the you know display that's how good the haptics are it doesn't feel very like it doesn't feel uncanny it doesn't feel like it's artificial it feels natural so it's so if that's something you are indeed wor worried about that oh you start using the dual display you won't get any sort of haptic feedback or anything like that. Don't worry. You can't. And it just keeps your keyboard as well. It doesn't change to the LG keyboard or anything like that. It's, I have G board installed. So have it on there. You can do it like that. Also, some things you can do, you can, you can swipe with three fingers left to, or right. And you can, you know, <laughs> switch displays like that. And it's, and as you guys can see, it's working really fast, right? I'm not trying to watch MK11 Aftermath. Um, let me just, let me just go to something that's not going to play anything. Another thing you could do, you could double tap on the dual display to shut it off. Double tap to turn it back on. Also, you just do this and it'll close both. You open it, it'll, it'll turn both back on. You close it this way, it'll shut off and it'll keep the, uh, it'll keep the main display on. You bring it back out, it'll turn on. So you want to set up like a wallpaper or something like that, what you have to do. It's a bit finicky, 
what you have to do is swipe down right here and press the dual screen settings if I can hit it <laughs> and you go down to wallpaper and you do it that way you can't just go into the gallery and do it it'll just change the wallpaper on your main display which that kind of sucks but it's whatever I kind of understand it <laughs> so it's not that big of a deal for me personally another thing you could do you get an active stylus you can use it on both the secondary display and the main display sorry sorry I got hiccups now main display and it works just fine from what I've seen in videos I don't have an, an, an active stylus yet, so I can't really show you guys as of right now, but it definitely does work. A, a few other things to notice. It uses the phone's accelerometer, obviously, to like, you know, go into landscape mode on here. So just keep that in mind. You can't just, you can't just tilt it a little bit and expect the dual screen to do it itself. You have to tilt the whole phone. That's a little bit weird, but it's kind of a given. <laughs> so it's not that big of a deal for me personally. Let's get into some gaming here. And let me find my uh, my emulator folder. If I have... And then, oh, and another thing. When you start this, it's basically a whole other phone. You can set it up. You can have widgets on here. You can have all that stuff on here. And you basically have to create your own folders and stuff like that. That kind of sucks, but <laughs> create more folders on here and stuff like that. That is kind of, you know, a bit much, but to me, I think it's fine. Hopefully the next time around, they can make it so like you could put on a setting to be like, just have all your, just have folders be there in like <laughs> just have folders be there on both if you want them on both or drag and drop a folder from here to your second display that would be pretty cool but you know what can you really do right now um so yeah gaming let me do drastic first the uh 3ds emulator over here now i gotta find what Oh, that's great. That's just great. Now it looks like I got to download it again. Give me a second. Okay, so I got an emulator up and running now. So this is Castlevania Order of Ecclesia on the Ninten Nintendo D for Nintendo DS. So as you guys can see, you go into the little game center icon right here. And you can choose your game tools, turn on LG gamepad, and it'll bring it up on the bottom here. Now, I got to reset my freaking, uh, <laughs> I got to reset my emulator again because it didn't keep my settings. But, yeah. Okay, now it's not working. What the fuck? Or it did, it's just not. I don't know, it's working. These buttons aren't working, though. I don't know, I'll figure that out. I'll, I'll have to set that up again. For whatever reason, it just got deleted from, <laughs> from my phone or whatever. So, I'll just have to look. I'll just have to get into that a little bit later. But, yeah, on the... On the dual display, as you guys can see, it works just fine. The gamepad does indeed work. I think I'll just boot up PSP instead for now. But, yeah. Let's, uh... PPSSP. Hopefully it didn't delete. Oh, it didn't. Good. Oh, and before I do that, just so I don't get any sort of, like, copyright. <laughs> let me turn down the volume of the app. And, and this emulator will just have all the, you know, virtual stuff go away. But yeah, God, this is so hard to do.
Oh, and I can't change focal length. That's great. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I'll go into, I guess I'll go into quick battle. And as you guys can hear, speakers are loud. <laughs> I just wanted to give you guys some sort of Uh, 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 it's very like since obviously this is a virtual pad it's not going to be nearly as good as say if you just plug in a PS4 controller or a dedicated like Bluetooth controller like this is going to be really hard trying to do on camera but uh, especially since this is a virtual like D-pad you can't um do crouch back or crouch forward or anything like that so just keep that in mind. I would advise if you're playing fighting games, intending to do that, I would definitely advise you to get like a dedicated, you know, controller for that. So use a USB, -C, a USB adapter and plug in your PS4 controller into your, um, V60. It'll work just fine. At least it should. I haven't done it. So, so yeah, just. You do that, or you can just, you know, you can just use it like that if you're doing platformers and stuff like that. Basic stuff that doesn't require, basic stuff that doesn't really require, um, any sort of like, you know, crouch back, crouch forward motions, press the motions, stuff like that for fighting games in particular. I wouldn't advise you to use the dual screen virtual controller for that but a nice thing a nice touch with the virtual controller is that it does have haptic feedback so that is indeed a nice touch and it's really it feels really good it doesn't feel cheap it's just something that's quality and something that is indeed appreciated so let's talk about battery battery for the dual screen case is like say The V60 without the dual screen case on, you could get nine. Some people have been able to get like 11 hours of screen on time on it. I could get nine, like barely get over nine hours, like nine hours and nine minutes of screen on time. And with the dual screen case on, I get like maybe f five to six hours of screen on time, depending on what I'm doing. So just keep that in mind there mileage may vary obviously but that's something that you can indeed that you can indeed expect when you get this phone with the dual screen case so let's talk about like accessories and stuff like that what comes with it you have this like obviously you got your cut out for your headphone jack that's kind of needed for an lg phone speaker Holes, obviously that's needed. And you have this mag magnetic charger. And what comes in the box is this like adapter for it. Let me go get it real quick. You have this right here. You get this and it just magnetically goes to the um, port. Kind of pretty much akin to like MacBooks and stuff like that. So that's really nice. It, it, it can be used for like file transfer as well. And stuff like that. It is really secure. You do still, you still are able to use fast charge with it. So it doesn't really hinder any sort of performance things at all. So that's really nice. Um, the one thing I will say about the headphone cutout, I do wish they made it a little bit wider, like a little bit, like put a little bit more of a lip right here and made this wider because say you have, <sighs> A pair of short tapes and this isn't like the stock cable but the stock cable also has this problem it doesn't go all the way in like it'll go in but it stops right there so it doesn't get in the headphone jack now obviously a way to mitigate this is to just get a new cable and you know obviously that's easy with 
headphones like these, they are, have detachable cables. So, yeah, I would say if you have any sort of like IEMs that have the ability to detach the cables and they have some sort of very thick, <laughs> some very thick, you know, shielding right there, it'll definitely cost you, it'll definitely cost you to, uh, not in terms of monetary value, but audio. And you won't be able to, you know, plug it in. Now, to that to be said, I am going to get like, I will be getting some cables to uh, test this out. And they're not like super expensive because I don't really need them to be. I will be getting cables to see if they will fit while using the dual screen case. But overall, it's like, that's something that is a bit, you know, sad, but what can you do? <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, this is a, overall for me, this is really a productive, this makes this already productivity powerhouse monster of a phone be even more of that just for less runtime. And if that less runtime is only like what? like pretty much halved, it makes sense because you're running two 1080p 60 hertz displays on here. That's something that can't be understated. You're running, <laughs> it, it's very much a flagship experience and you get this like little ticker display right here that does indeed shut off. And then it's, it's a little bit finicky because sometimes when you raise it, it doesn't want to turn on, but sometimes it does. More often than not, it does. But sometimes it just doesn't, but it's whatever. And you don't have to turn, you don't have to like physically turn off the phone to have the screen shut off. You just shut, you could just shut the case and it'll turn off. So that's pretty nice too. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff with this that I really do enjoy. I don't really hate it at all. Actually, I really do enjoy it. I found myself using it more often than I expected to. Kind of expected to be like, yeah, it's a nice feature, but we'll see. <laughs> um, who is this for? If you're a V series like lover, right? And you've been rocking since V10 or V20, this line, or even V30 with this line. It's like, it makes this phone kind of, it makes me not bring other phones with me when I'm, you know, going out and about when I have a dual, when I have the dual screen on. And even without it, and I'll get to that more in my review, it's a very, it's a very, um, particular experience. Do I think it's for everybody? No. Do I think people are totally <laughs> will people be totally fine without using a dual screen case and getting that shelling out the extra hundred dollars to get it? Yeah, I think people will be totally fine. But I'm glad LG went with this approach and not some like where you have that option and not some foldable phone that you really don't have a choice and it has a gimped screen that can do all this stuff, but it's a small window of a screen that you can barely see anything off of. And the moment you fold it out, oh, it's just one big dumbass screen. I don't like that. I think this is a more, is it a more, you know, is it a more simplified approach? Not really. But for me personally, I think it's what is needed for those, what, what is, it's appreciated for those people that want that sort of experience. And I'm one of those people. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of this. Are you getting the V60 with the dual screen display? Are you interested in this? I am going to have more videos coming out on this. I'm going to do more gaming on it because there, you can customize the controller and stuff like that. And that's pretty nice. So I do indeed want to get into that. Um, other than that, though, this is a really, really nice accessory. And I'm glad they bundled with the phone. I wish like the LG Velvet, they bundled an active stylus in it. But I guess they didn't really expect people to try that. <laughs> so, you know, it was probably a feature they were so saving to show with the LG Velvet. That's probably why they didn't show it. So you can't really do anything about that. This is Sparta. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for support. Hope you guys have a wonderful 
Sunday, whatever time of day it is, your area have a good one. Like the video if you like it, dislike it. If you dislike it, share with people that are interested in this sort of content. And I will see you guys in the next video.